Hello and welcome to Recess with Punk and Futz. I am your host, Miss Rebecca, and today we are joined by Miss Julia Zabrovich. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. So before we get started, um, I'll introduce you to Mr. Mr. Buster here. <laughs> yeah, he decided to join us last minute, so uh, he's sticking around for, for the time being. Um, <laughs> But on a little bit of a serious note, um, we would like to thank all of the frontline workers out there, all the nurses, doctors, delivery people, grocers, everyone that is out there helping right now. Um, we cannot, um, we thank you very much. Um, we could not be here without you. And we'd also like to thank all the parents, um, all the grown-ups, all the big ones out there um, that are helping all the little ones do, their, do the stuff that they have to do. Um, do you want to join me, uh, Julia, in thanking them? I would love that. All right, cool. We're going to say thank you, grownups, on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Thank, thank you, you grownups. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Okay. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Julia? I would love to. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julia. I work at the Brooklyn Museum in the education department. So I get to spend all of my days talking and learning with kids like you. Um, I love talking about artists and the art they create. And I firmly believe that everyone is an artist in their own way. Um, so I'm excited to talk to all of you today um, about art. And then our fun thing at the end is that we will get to make some art together. Yep, I'm very excited for today um, and yeah. to talk about her. <laughs> and I think that that's something that um, when we when we discussed a little bit earlier about how we look at art, um, you know, I think a lot of us don't really know what to look at. So I'm 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 excited that um, that you're here and you're gonna teach us some stuff. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to everyone about museums because something I know is that sometimes museums can make some people nervous, and that's okay. Yeah. Even I get nervous in museums sometimes. Museums can often have, there's a lot of people in there. They can be really loud or really, really quiet or really bright or even really dark. Um, and museums can also, uh, it can also feel like really, really serious places sometimes too. Yeah. Um, so I really believe um, that going into the museum can sometimes be a little overwhelming but I think museums should be places that we can go to have a lot of fun and work together and be ourselves. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think all of us, um, I saw Robin's uh, comment over there about how she misses New York, um, you know, going to going out to the museums. And I think that we all kind of miss art. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that you can join us today and, and guide us through some art. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, so before we get started, um, we are going to introduce the secret word of the day, which is find. So do you want to tell us a little bit about why it's important um, find is uh, find is important today? Yeah, so find is very important in the um, world of art and museum education because a lot of the time we look at art to find the meaning of the art or to find how we feel about the art. Um, and in particular, one of the objects we're going to look at today, one of the artworks, uses materials called found objects. So that those objects are exactly what you might think of. Found objects are things that you just find around and make art out of them. So finding is both a way that we learn in museums, but also how we make art too. Very, very cool. Thank you, Julia. Yeah, thank you. All right, so if you have any questions for Julia, um, put them in the comments and we will get to them. Um, but just know that there is a 20 second lag. So we will get to them, but, uh, but yeah, we might not be in the most timely manner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so without further ado, take it away, Julia. All righty. Okay, so hi again, everyone. It's just me now, and I want to let everyone know I want to be very transparent and say I'm a little nervous today. So I'm going to be shaking my hands a little bit. Maybe I might shift around. Um, but 
I wanted to let you know that I'm a little nervous today. So I hope that you all enjoy the lesson. Um, so as we were talking about um, that um, museums can be kind of, uh, you know, overwhelming places and there's a lot of artwork in museums and it can be challenging to figure out what the artworks mean or what they're trying to say or even what they're made of. Um, and sometimes even when I see an artwork as someone who teaches about art all day, I'm not even sure where to start. So in these situations, I always like to check in with my five senses. And this helps me ground myself in my thoughts and my feelings. And I'm wondering if you all know what the five senses are. And we have them up on the screen here. So we'll just go over them really quickly. And those five senses are sight with your eyes, sound with your ears, smell with your nose, taste with your mouth, and touch with your hands. So we're gonna be talking a lot today about using sensing in art making and in our comprehension of certain art objects. So thank you, Shanique, for the, for the senses. Um, and using the senses is a really wonderful way to start talking about art. Uh, art, especially if you don't know where to start. Um, they give us a good understanding of how we're reacting to our environment. And senses help us to do everything, even learn about art. So we're gonna get started. Um, what we'll be doing, I'll just map out today's lesson. We're gonna be together for about 25 more mis minutes. And in this time, we're going to talk about two artworks, and then we're gonna end with an art activity. And Shanique, if we could have that slide with all the materials up um, for our lesson today. Uh, you might want to have a pencil and paper, but it's not necessary. But what you will need if you want to do the art activity at the end is something, some soft kind of material like yarn, thread, paper towels, rags, anything you can find, secret word, um, in, your, in your home or wherever you are. Um, and a few small items. And I leave that up to you and um, your adults to find whatever that means to you. And also, uh, maybe also a pair of scissors. So adults, um, this is a good time to grab these materials. Um, we'll use them at the end. Okay, so with that in mind, we're gonna look at our first artwork and Shanique will put it up in full screen. And I'm gonna give you like 10 minutes just to look at it. And then we'll come back together and talk. Okay. I think we can come back now. <laughs> all right, um, Shanique, if it would be great, it would be great if um, we could also have the painting up beside me too. I know it'll be a little smaller and a little harder to see, but um, just for our reference. So this is one of my favorite artworks to talk about in the museum. I teach from it all the time. And there's a lot going on in the painting. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call on Miss Rebecca to help teach us, to help us talk about this piece. So if we could have Miss Rebecca join us again, that would be wonderful. Hey! Hi! Welcome <laughs> back. I'm back. <laughs> so Miss Rebecca, I want to first ask you, do you like this painting? I do. I like this painting. Yes. Oh. It has some very nice colors in there and there's a lot going on, but I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not quite sure what's happening in this piece. Do you? No, I don't know what's going on either. Okay, well, this is a perfect example of one of those times when we can start by using our senses. And when I teach from this object, one of the, one of the things I like to do with my students is make a sensory poem. And so on a piece of paper, I write, um, I write, I see, I smell, I feel, I taste, and I hear. Um, and then we imagine that we're in the painting. So if you have a notebook, a piece of paper and a pen, it might be nice to 
hold, to um, have with you and write down those things. Um, and if not, you can just talk, uh, leave a comment in the section below um, or talk to your adult about it, talk to each other. Um, so again, I'll just say those one more time in case you wanna write them down. I see, I smell, I feel, I taste, and I hear. So doing this kind of sensory activity, oh, thank you, Shanique, for putting the senses back up for us. What I do when we're doing a, what I hope that students will walk away with when we do this kind of activity is a better understanding of what might be happening in the piece. And there are our own personal understanding. So Ms. Rebecca, I might mm -hmm. ask you, if you were imagining yourself in this piece, what okay. do you think you'd see? Hmm. Is it okay if I close my eyes and picture yeah. myself there? Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I might do it with you just so I can envision what you're thinking. Okay, so C, is that what we're doing first? Yeah. Okay, so I see it's very blurry. I see a lot of snow around me. Mm, okay. Okay, so it could be blurry because there's a lot of snow. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go next. Okay. What do I smell? Hmm. I think I might smell hot chocolate. Ooh. Because mm -hmm. winter always makes me think of hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go to you next, Miss Rebecca. What do you feel? Cold. <laughs> Very cold. <laughs> Very cold, yeah. Um, and then next we'll have I taste. Mm. I think I might taste a snowflake on my tongue. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, what do you hear, Miss Rebecca? Mm. I hear, you know, I hear the plop, 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 plop of, uh, of horse hooves. Oh, yeah, okay. Maybe jingle bells, maybe too, like on their, on their collars or something, you know, plop, plop, jingle, jingle. Great. All right, you can open your eyes again. So by just doing that, I feel like I understand the piece a lot more. Um, you know, at my first glance, I might not have realized that there were horses in it, but upon Ooh. thinking about the senses and what Miss Rebecca said, I heard those horses and I see them now. Um, and um, uh, That's a good point. It's a fun exercise to kind of imagine yourself there. Um, yeah, I like that. Mm. And so we see that some people in the comments are doing their own sensory poems, like Kat. She says she's feeling cold and maybe wet from the snow. Mm -hmm. uh, she hopes she's holding coffee and she smells it and she hears wheels crushing the snow. Oh yeah, that's a good, that's a good sound. Yeah. yeah, these are all really, really nice sounds to have. Yep. Um, so I love that because now instead of just walking past this piece and saying like, oh, that's a pretty landscape, we have a broader sense of what this painter might have been feeling when he painted this or the p feelings he was trying to evoke mm -hmm. all by tapping into our five senses. Um, so thank you for spending a little time with this one, uh, this piece. I think it's time that we can move on to our next piece. Um, I go? Um, you can stay, Miss Rebecca. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> so, um, We've talked about this beautiful sensory piece of art, and we're gonna move on now to something that's a little more challenging, but I know that you're all going to do a great job, but it's going to be nice to have Miss Rebecca here to help us. So next, we're gonna look at the next sculpture for a few seconds before we come back together. Shanique, if we would like to just, yeah, this would be great. Okay, we can come back now. Now, I am so excited to share this piece with all of you because this is by one of my favorite artists and her name was Judith Scott. And Judith was an artist with Down syndrome and she also was largely deaf and nonverbal. So with the love, care and support she got from her twin sister, Joyce, 
and the dedicated individuals at the Creative Growth Art Center in California, Joyce was able to express herself through beautiful sculptures like this one. So this one's a little more challenging, right? Because the last painting we saw had a lot of recognizable images in it, right? Like snow yeah. and buildings and horses. Mm -hmm. uh, this sculpture requires a little more investigating, right? Yeah. So Miss Rebecca, I would love to ask you what's going on here in your no best idea. No <laughs> idea. No idea. <laughs> and that's okay. This is one of those wonderful times where you might experience a piece of art in a museum that you're like, I, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so what we can do now is use our senses again. And this one, because it's a sculpture, we can't exactly picture ourselves in it. But what we can do is we can imagine what it might feel like. What, like, what might it feel like if you rub your hand on it? What do you think it might feel like? I think it would be smooth in some spots, but then mm -hmm. kind of vividity in others. Yeah. You know, like protrudy in others, rough, but smooth at the same time, I think. Yeah, it might be, it might have some different kinds of textures. Mm -hmm. And what about, mm -hmm. and pumpkin futs? Oh, hello, it says, oh, it might be pretty rough. Yeah, we mm -hmm. see a lot of different kinds of textures here. Um, I wonder what it might sound like if we were touching it. I kind of think that it might sound a little scratchy, right? Mm, yeah. Because of all these different textures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it kind of looks like this might be made out of like paper towels or something. Yeah, some sort of paper product, yeah. Yeah, some kind of product like that. Um, so these are just a few ways we can use the senses to talk about a piece like this. And using sensor, senses was really important to this artist, so Judith Scott. So what she did was, and we're gonna come back to our secret mm -hmm. word of find. Um, oh, thank you, Kat. Okay. She thinks it would sound crinkly. Um, so Judith Scott used these found objects and those are, again, things you would just find that weren't exactly made for art making. So things like, like maybe a stick you find outside or, you know, a piece of scrap fabric that you might find in a drawer. These are things like found objects. And in terms of her senses, mm -hmm. um, even though Judith Scott didn't have the use of one of her senses, her hearing, she used her artwork to communicate her other thoughts and feelings through her other senses. And so she would can always work with the same kinds of colors and combinations of colors and materials over and over again, because she liked how they looked or how they felt, or even maybe what they what what they what they might have smelled like. Um, so she really repeated um, how she made her art based off of her senses. Mm. Yeah, so um, this is just one way that we can start to look at art using our senses, but also understand how an artist uses their senses to make art. Any questions about that? <laughs> Hmm, let's see if the if the if the crowd has any questions. They have a lot of comments about what they think it would smell like, or or ha we didn't. Did we go through smell? We didn't go through smell. Mm. I wonder what this would smell like. Hmm. You know, I have these things in my drawers called sachets um, mm -hmm. that often have something that smells really nice, so it keeps your clothes smelling really nice. Mm -hmm. And this kind of looks like it could be a sachet, like maybe if it had lavender in it or something. Yeah. Could. I think it yeah. would smell really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I often, I kind of, I, I kind of want to think like what the color, what, what white would smell like. Mm. That's kind of where, where I'm thinking. Like, I wonder what that like, like white would smell like. Is that too, is that too weird? No, I think that's great. You know, and when you said that, it made me think about the last painting that we saw because thinking of smelling like white and thinking what's white, snow. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of looks like maybe like a, like a lump of snow, right? Maybe, you mm -hmm. know, once, once, you know, it's been around for a couple of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I like cats thinking also um, that it would smell like a book. Mm, yes. Maybe. Yeah. Reminds me of an old book almost, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Lisa asks, is this piece at the Brooklyn Museum? It is at the Brooklyn Museum right now. It's in one of our, um, it's in one of our exhibitions called Out of Place. Um, so it is there right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, without further ado, um, now that we've talked about this one, I want us to think more about how we can, as artists, use our senses to make art. Oh, Casey Quinn. Casey Quinn is very close to me. She's one of my very, very best friends. Hi, Casey. Um, <laughs> um, she uh, thinks that it would smell like newspaper. I can see that too. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, so we're talking about Judith Scott used these things called found objects. And that's why um, we may not really understand what is in this piece. Because what she would do is she would find these little found objects and she would wrap them up with soft material. And for our object, to our art activity today, that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, Lisa asked, are there Judith Scott pieces at the Brooklyn Museum? So right now there's only one on view, um, but I hope we'll have more in the future. Yeah, we would love that. And hopefully we'll be able to go, um, you know, at some time soon. I hope so too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, if we can go back to that, that uh, slide of materials and Miss Rebecca, you can stay on screen if you'd like or you can uh, go off screen, whatever you prefer. Um, right, well, I'll, I'll leave it to you to wrap things or to, to do the okay. art with the kids and then I'll be back in about what, five minutes. <laughs> sure, sounds great. All right. Okay, so um, adults, if you were able to grab those um, those materials, that's wonderful. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to make our own mini found object sculptures. So I went ahead and around my house found tiny little objects. So I'll show you some. I took, um, I got a bouquet of flowers for my mom this morning and this little flower fell off and it smells so nice and it makes a nice crinkly sound. So these are all things I really, really enjoy. And it feels really nice against my face. It's very smooth. So I'm gonna use this one. My good friend Kat um, gave me this little dinosaur and it's tiny and I love how it feels. It's kind of bumpy. So I, I wanna use this too. I have this little unicorn eraser that I love. And then I have this, this is kind of bigger, um, but this is um, a little jar full of sand and shells. And if you can hear that, I love that sound. And especially now uh, that we can't go to the beach, when I open it, it smells like the ocean. So I love that. So what you're going to do is you're gonna take your soft material, like we have some, I have some yarn, I have some like friendship bracelet thread. And even if you don't have things like that, I have paper towel here too, cause that's soft. And what we're gonna do, I think I'm gonna start with the, Hmm, the flower. I'm going to do this one. So what we're going to do is you're just going to put it. Um, oh, hello, Christian. Christian says that it might sound like the ocean. Yes, that's what my, my jar of shells does. Um, so I'm going to take my, um, my flower and I'm just going to wrap it up in my soft material all the way. And you know, this can look like anything you want. You can make a sculpture. It can be whatever you want. There's no right or wrong way to do this project. It's just a fun way to think about what in your house makes you feel good. What smells really wonderful or, or helps you taste things like a spoon or a fork? What has a nice scent? What has a nice sound? Do you want to keep that thing forever? And what might it look like or how might your senses change after a while when you make it look like something new? So this flower looks so new, so different now. Now, you know, it doesn't have that same look to it, but it still feels really nice, right? Feels really nice. Makes a nice squishy sound when I, when I squeeze it. It's still soft against my face. 
And I think it kind of looks like a little present. So this is something very easy you can do at home. And I'll show you one that I did a couple weeks ago. This is one I did. And I used these colors, blue and yellow, because it reminded me of a school I went to, my college where I went. These were our college colors. And do you have any ideas of what might be inside? So this is another flower that I took from a bouquet that my friend Casey gave me um, because we miss each other. And so I knew I wanted to keep something of that with me forever. And as I said earlier, you know, I get a little nervous. So I like to have a little squishy thing to have with me all day. So this flower, now that it's wrapped up, I get to keep it forever and keep that memory and I also get to squeeze it when I'm feeling nervous or I need to, I need to, I need something to relieve my stress. So this helps keep me in touch with my senses. And so I'm hoping that if you do this with other objects, you can do that too. You can make something soft to use um, to help you ground yourself, right? Or, you know, if I wrapped this little dinosaur that my friend gave me, let's see. I can cut myself another piece of orange thread. And if I wrap it around the dino, he looks so pretty and dressed up. Looks like he's wearing a costume now, right? <laughs> so, this changes my view because now I brought more yarn around him, but now it kind of looks like he's wearing a sweater, right? And then that makes me think of the feeling of warmth and maybe this dinery, di dinosaur sort, um, is wearing a sweater because he's cold. Maybe it's the winter time for him. Maybe he's in that first painting we were in, right? So this is a really fun way for you to find objects around your house that are very important to you or make you feel good and make you feel sensor like a sensory object. Thank you, Lisa. Um, something that gets you to, to focus in on yourself and re re relieve some stress and also make some art out of it, just like Judith Scott did. Um, she took things that were within an arm's reach and made them her own based off of the colors she liked, the feeling of certain materials. And you can do that too from home. So that's very easy. So here are the things I wrapped today. If we had a little more time, I would have wrapped them more, but I have my little present and my little winter dinosaur and I have my little memento. I love um, thank you, Miss Rebecca. Um, and so that is the end of my time with you all today. And I hope you get to come to the Brooklyn Museum soon and be able to see those artworks in person. Mm -hmm. And remember next time you get to go to a museum, and you're feeling maybe a little overwhelmed, maybe bring your little sensory toy that you made or check in with your five senses. Those are really good, really great tips um, for visiting museums. Um, so are we, are we able to visit the Brooklyn Museum virtually yet? So uh, we can't, you can't walk through the halls virtually, but if you go on the Brooklyn Museum's website, um, you can look at a whole bunch of art that we have. We have all of our permanent collection objects on view through the website that you can learn about. Very cool. I, I, I have to say, I really liked when you said that there's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we, we kind of have preconceptions about what's right and wrong about art, but there is no right and wrong. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. I say that everyone is an artist in their own way. And when we make art, it is meant to spark conversation like the ones that we had today. So I think everyone's thoughts and feelings about art are valid and correct for them. Um, and the important thing is that we get to talk about them together. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Right. Yeah. Um, do we think it's time for the word of the day? I think so too. All right, so we're not gonna say it, we're gonna type it, all right? Remember what that word of the day is from a while back. <laughs> First person to type it in will get a free, a free punk and fidget sent to them. Very cool. So, yeah, let's see if let's see if we can get someone to to type in the secret word of the day. Um, if there's any more questions 
for um, for Miss Julia. We are happy to answer them now. Um, mm -hmm. We will also put up if if people wanted to contact you, how would they do that? So I think Shanique will be putting them up, um, but you can contact me at this email here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I Very also cool. have a little website that you can check out. It is a little under construction, but- um, That's okay. That There's no right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Look who it is. <laughs> All right, Casey Quinn, congratulations. Fine, that's our word of the day. All right. Thank you, Casey. We'll contact you after and we'll, we'll send a fidget your way, a pumpkin fidget your way. Um, so I, I know that I had a lot um, of fun today uh, following along with your lessons. Um, and I hope that everybody else did as well. Um, now we can, um, I don't think, uh, did, we, did we miss any of the questions over here? I don't think so. Um, yeah. No, all right. Well, thank you so much, Julia Zabrovich. Um, Lisa <laughs> is posting the um, <laughs> is posting the brooklynmuseum.org website um, for anyone out there who wants to go and visit the Brooklyn Museum. Um, <laughs> it is Julia's friend, it's true, uh, but it is not rigged. Um, so please tune in next week also. We have a very cool story time with a Miss Ashley, with a Miss Ashley um, Learning Emporium. So uh, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye.